Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. This channel is about live techno performances, motivational stuff and tech talk. Have fun! Do you want to know how to make head bob and techno bass lines? Check out this video and I'll tell you all about it. In this video I want to tell you something about how I started making music because, well, when I started out I was not very good at it. And now I'm growing and I'm playing live. The other thing I want to talk to you about is the Analog 4. What a beast of a machine. I want to, I want to tell you something about why I use it and why I do not use a MOOC for bass lines because, well, MOOCs are good for bass lines, right? I even got a bass station too, I don't use it. I'll tell you later why. So this video is about making bass lines. What do you think is the hardest part of making a bass line? I'm uh, getting a lot of questions about, well, how did you start and why do you choose your gear and why do you do what you do and how are you growing as, a, as an artist and, um, well, all that kind of questions. It's about motivational stuff and that's what's this channel about too. So I want to tell you something about it because when I started out making music, well, I'm not sure if I would call it music because, well, yeah, it was structuring sounds or something or or yeah something like that and um i had fun with it and uh it, it started out when i uh, met my buddy aka uh mr cats i'll put a link in the, in the description uh, we, we do a lot of videos uh, together we do some jam sessions nowadays but back in the day i think it's about 15 years ago i um i met met him on his attic and um, there were knobs everywhere literally everywhere so um like the classics the Ro roland 101 and a jupiter 4 jd 800 jd 990 uh jp 8000 um well what's the drum computers everything and um when it came up there, I thought, what the, it's this. I, 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 I want to know what, what do all those knobs do? And um, he told me something, a little bit of how a filter works, how envelopes work. And well, back then uh, it, it didn't make much sense, sense to me, but um, I was intrigued. And um, I, want, I wanted to know what those knobs do. And, uh, so, I got me a copy of Reason, Reason uh, from Prop Propeller Heads, and um, I started out. And um, not much later, I, uh, I, I, I was depressed. Uh, not, things were not going well for me. But I had time, and the only thing I wanted to do, I had a hyper focus for making music, so I did that 9 to 5, and uh, I learned a lot, learned, learned about compression, composing, um, strong song structures, um, whatever, and I made, I made a lot of rubbish. But I had fun, and uh, I made progression, and um, well, then I, I bought some synths, um, didn't actually how to, how to use them properly, but yeah, I... It's all about exploration and having fun. It wasn't my goal to make music for other people. I, I, it wasn't my goal to perform with it or make records that I can send to a label or no. I just wanted to make music. And the, and the fun part is uh, how do you use technology to make sound to, and be creative? How to use technology in a creative way? I always liked that. Slowly, I was investing in better speakers and uh, investing in knowledge. That's a very important part because, well, yeah, you can do things from your feeling, from, from your gut. And that's, that's awesome, but it only brings you so far. There, there is a point where you have to get some proper knowledge about 
what are you doing? And what are you supposed to be doing? And not I'm saying you have to you don't follow the rules, but you have to know the rules to 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 break them. And um, yeah, it's, maybe it's a cliche, but it I think I think it's true. For me, it's true. My ambition grew to perform live. I I didn't I didn't like the doll anymore. The, the, the digital audio workstation working with the computer is it, it, it's just not for me. I all the clicking and stuff and too much options and I want to I want to use all of them and um, so I made the decision to go all hardware. In the meanwhile, I picked up Techno. Techno um, <laughs> when I was uh, thirty, I um, twenty nine I think. Yeah, I uh, got to to a party and they really really had fun and uh, since then techno is it's my life. I do everything. I listen to techno all day in the car at home at my at my pods all day. I became better and better at making it. There was still a lot that I had to learn and that's the point where I met uh, Lucien Ford from Analog Kitchen. He had a big hit with um, Quadrophonia back in the days. And um, he's actually a really helpful guy and he, he helped me out a lot. And um, well, he's not chewing it for me, I have to chew myself. But he, he, he put me in the right direction and uh, I think I... And I learned a lot, and I uh, got better and better, and now I'm performing live. I, I, I never thought I I would do something like performing live, because I always thought, yeah, I'm just a normal guy. I don't have what it what it takes to be a live, a live musician. But then I realized, m maybe I do. Maybe I do. I think I do. And, and I like it. So, um... I'm just a normal guy. I think you can do it too, and th and that's what this channel is about too. It's it's about motivation. How did I get to the point where I get to perform live? I had some I had to do some things for that. To it, it, it's it's not just falling out of the sky and then you have it and you go. No, you have to work hard. You have to be disciplined, and um, and in future videos I will uh, I will address that too, how to build habits and getting better at music and all that kind of stuff. In the intro I already told you something about why I use the Analog 4 instead of say a Moog Mini Tower or Bass Station 2. I do have a Bass Station 2 and I use it for, for basses, more lead kind of basses but yeah I use it. But for us, for this uh, low need uh, bottom end. I use the analog four, and um, it's not known for being a, a, a low, a, a bass frequency monster, but it can do it very, very well. And um, today I want to uh, tell you something about it. First, I want to give you a quick overview about uh, of my setup. Uh, it contains the base station two, obviously. I mentioned it already. It's from Novation. I love Novation filters. Um, over here we have the Novation Peak, absolute beast, soundscaping, uh, sculpting capabilities, it's, it's, wow, I love it, I love it, and it looks very, very good. Uh, over here I have an Allen & Heath DB2, Zone DB2 mixer, um, it sounds awesome, I tested it in, in a club, and it's, wow, this bottom end is rocking. Over here is the Digitect. It's the brain of my setup. I do all of the MIDI sequencing and uh, program changes, um, MIDI CCs, everything is controlled by the Digitech. It has its limitations, but I love it to death. And over here we have the Behringer TD3. Uh, it's going through the Blues driver, but I don't use it anymore actually. Uh, it's gonna be replaced with another one because, well, it sucks all the life out of the TD3. It's it's too much compression. I I don't I don't like it. So um, at first I thought, but no, it's gonna go. Gotta go. Over here, um, the the blues driver is going into the dig, uh, which is uh, has external tap tempo from the. Uh, CV module in the analog 4. 
Speaking of which, the analog four, um, I use it all the time. Uh, it's very, very versatile. Admit it, I don't think it's the best sounding synth out there, but uh, its capabilities make up for that very well. And I'm going to show you in, in, in a bit. Uh, the only thing I didn't mention already is the Source Audio Collider. It's a delay and reverb in one pedal, and uh, the bass station is um, going through this pedal. Under here, there is some routing. There's a MIDI splitter. Um, all things of all sort of things uh, going on. I'll uh, I'll tell you tell you more about that in a later video. The analog four. Let's get into it. How I use the analog four. Uh, the first track. It has four tracks. Um, I always use it for the lower, the subby bass line. And um, it has some uh, specific features that I'm going to show you. The second is mostly um, a bit of white noise, uh, so I can make, uh, I can create a feeling and build up and slow down and use it with an LFO uh, in conjunction with the, the um, uh, performance uh, knobs. Um, track three is a lead or an arpeggio and um, track four is well a util utility track quirky sounds and washed with reverb and speaking of which it's it, it has an excellent uh, um, reverb and delay uh, it uses it as a send here's an fx track that I can use as an external MIDI channel or whatever I like and CV track which I use for tap tempo for the dig. Well, I say let's get going. Um, I prepared a track for today and we're gonna make a, a bass line together on the analog 4. I used uh, some basic uh, drums, sound like this. You hear a, a, a kick with a lot of noise on it, and that's on purpose because it had a, has a lot of uh, information, a lot of frequency, and on a on a big system, man, this is the only thing you need. You can throw the rest away. Um, a little hi hat with uh, um, some um, velocity on every third node, and an open. And I don't know why. It's not sounding right now. I turned the knob. The volume knob. That's not helping. Okay, that's it. This, this is the basic beat. Nothing special. It'll work. It, it'll, it'll serve the purpose for now. Unmuted. Got some. My trusty base station too. It's a bassy lead, and I have some a three or three kind of like. No, it is a three or three uh, bass line, or it's 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 gluey. I'll tell you more about it, and some beautiful, beautiful strings. That's. Yeah, I, I just I just love it. This is just one oscillator, and you can do much, so much oscillate, oh, um, modulation. Uh, wow! Here's I, I love uh, doing some um, oscillator three filter mod, which um, with max uh, envelope depth and uh, modulated by uh, envelope two. Really cool trick. You tr you should try it out if you have Innovation P. Um, okay, baseline with the analog 4. I'm gonna clear this track, I've prepared a little bit. So, you shut up, you shut up too. And have a kick. When I uh, start a bass line, um, I usually start pretty simple because um, the pretty stuff I do with the bass station. And I almost always start out with 
every uh, track of every step 16th 16th note well this this is not working obviously we don't want this trim down the filter and make the baseline make the note shorter then add some filter overdrive a little bit of envelope depth and oh I also like my envelope depth to be short and my amp envelope is also pretty short sweet spot is around here I think and you can use the um, uh, the envelope shapes to get I, I always use this one I've mostly used this one because it's nice and snappy and depending on what I want this is mostly the envelope shapes I use well then very very important retrig uh, for bass lines you can't hear it now, but you will in a moment. Well, dial back the filter a bit, and then well, nothing special, right? It's not, but it will be. Then oscillator two. We add seven semitones. As you can hear now, I didn't set the oscillator retrick, and it basically means uh, retrick means uh, um, every time the oscillator is uh, triggered, it starts exactly at the same point. And now it's a bit floating; you can hear it phasing in and out a bit. So when it uh, when I add retrick, when I put it on, it's way more punchy and clear and and for the low end, I want it. I want it cleaned up because I don't want a messy uh, uh, low end. I've got a, a kick that does very well, and it does a lots of low end. So this needs to be clean, not messy. Then I already did a little bit of overdrive. Have to taste. Yes. And now you can hear. working together with the kick without the kick it's pretty static and mostly I take out the first steps to make room for the kick and it gives a bit of a drive you can also let them in and maybe uh, uh, and lower the volume per step or whatever you like it, it's you use a, a frequency analyzer so you can um, tell if it's uh, if the bass and the, and the kick are fighting with each other uh, I you mainly use uh, the uh, key of D minor and that's because of I want to have it uh, relative to my kick I tune my kick and um, well it's a topic I want to discuss with you uh, another time because there's a lot uh, a, a buzz um, about tuning the kick and I have my own opinion about it and it's not tuning to the uh, to the key I didn't tune it to the key I tuned it uh, to make room for the baseline and always using the same kick and that's why I'm always using D minor maybe F that's the opposite scale but that's what I mostly do well we have a pretty basic baseline I think it's going well we can add a little bit of LFO to get a, what, a bit of movement going on it's too much Uh, we've got a little movement going on. and 
the the thing I like about the sequencer is, is awesome. Um, this is still pretty basic, and uh, we can uh, use syncopation in our advantage. We, like uh, every uh, downbeat, we can. Um, Uh, put the, the note an octave higher and or maybe with an F instead of a D now it's a little bit more interesting interesting right and then I, I just I, I love this uh, the accent track and you can use it for every track and you can set it up the way you like you can it's comparable to the uh, through your three your accent and you can get really get you can get easy easy grooves um, someone told me um, every downbeat it's a bit of a, a white man's uh, <laughs> groove we can spice it up a little bit Caribbean or something Turn up the accent, so the effect is more more pronounced. Okay, and now we have a pretty nice groove going on. A little less envelope depth. Now I turn down, and now I want. And now I'm going to use the the, the second uh, filter. This this is one of the things I think the the analog for makes it makes a great utility device. Um, it's not the most correct characteristic a sound I know, but you can tune it to your liking, and uh, and that's that's where the magic happens. I think. Listen to this. Now, now they're playing together the, the bass and the, uh, the kick and the bass line. I, I, I just love it. And that, when I open the filter now, like this, I, I love it. I, I think you can dance to this all night. The groove is going. So, to spice things uh, up a little bit, we. Uh, can add a. Uh, I've prepared a, um, a base station, and uh, it's a little uh, arpeggio I played in. I did it by hand, not with the arpeggiator. And it... and what I usually do. Well, let's take the the analog four out. There's a little bit of bass in the, in the. I uh, programmed some strings, and there's a little bit of chord progression going on there. I think it's. And now, if I wanted to you to make this track bigger, I uh, I would make a, a bass line that was. Has a chord progression too. CD three. A little jam here. Filter of the first track. 
It's groovy, right? I like it. too much but oh, I'm a sucker for reverb station out height in the TD3 it's just being here for the groove now shorten and shorten the notes to basic well this was just a, I got to carry a bit carried away it was a just jam I like it and if I were if I actually like this track and um, were to work it out I put it in patterns and um, well prepare to play it on a, on a live gig so to wrap this video up um, I think you know now how um, how why I do what I do, um, how I grew as an artist, and I think you know something about how I use the Analog 4 and how you can use it, and maybe you picked up a few tips and tricks. I hope you know now how you can get a groove in your in your bass lines and why I use the Analog 4 for it and why I love it for it. There are some pros and cons about uh, using uh, the analog four for uh, for bass because there are obvious some other contender contenders, but um, it's really awesome. I hope you experience how you can get a, a bass line that doesn't eat up your your kick and how do you position it using a spectrum analyzer well this was my first video and um, i hope you liked it and if you want to have some other topics discussed let me let me know down in the comments and maybe we can talk about it see you later